Hello dear students, welcome back to Karim's Biology. From class 8 biology, we have been discussing the lesson cell, the basic unit of life. In this session, I am going to explain about cell and its components. That means how the cells appear under microscope and what are the different components present in the cell. We will be discussing in this lesson. So let us start the session. See children, we have observed onion cells under cheek cells under microscope. In my previous class itself, I have shown you the pictures of onion cells and cheek cells exactly how they appear under microscope. Now let us make a comparison between the onion cells and cheek cells about how they appeared under microscope and what are the differences and similarities that we noticed between onion cells and cheek cells. So let me first of all show you the pictures of onion cells and cheek cells under microscope. So this is how the onion cells appear under microscope and this is the way the cheek cells appear under microscope. Remember for both the cells they are colored because we have added stain so that we can observe the cells clearly. Now I am going to ask you a few questions. Before answering my questions carefully observe these two cells and then answer. So the first question what are the structures present in the cells? So here we are talking about onion cells and cheek cells. Onion cells are nothing but plant cells. Cheek cells are nothing but animal cells. So what are the structures present in the cells? Look at that. This is the onion cell. Within the onion, you cannot notice any type of structures, but you can see a darkly stained uh, body at the middle of the cell or at the periphery of the cell. Here also you can see a darkly stained body, except that uh, you cannot see clearly what are the different parts present in the cell. Okay. And uh, did you see a tiny dark stained thing in all the cells? Yes, a tiny darkly stained thing. First of all, let us see this uh, onion peel cells. There are so many cells here. Let us find out whether this tiny dark stained things are present in the cells or not. So this is a darkly stained body here. So here there is one more darkly stained body in this cell. Here one more, here one more. Here there is another thing. And look at this. Yes. In almost every cell, in onion cells, we can find a tiny dark stained thing. Now come to the cheek cells. In cheek cells also, in every cell, you can find a darkly stained body at the middle. Is it not? So yes, we can find a tiny dark stained thing in almost all the cells. Are they located in the center of the cell in both cells? Here both cells means onion cells and cheek cells. Are they? They refers to the tiny dark stained bodies. Yes, we have seen the tiny darkly stained structures, but are they exactly located in the center? So if this is the cell, this is the cell, are they located at the center? First of all, look at this cell. Yes, they are located at the center. But here, this tiny darkly stained body is not exactly at center, but towards the periphery. Here also it is somewhat towards the periphery. And uh, look at this. Here also the darkly stained body is towards the periphery. Now come to the cheek cells. Within cheek cells, this is the darkly stained body which is exactly at the center. Okay, Almost there at the center but, but in some of the cells they are towards a side of the cell. Okay, And one more question is what is difference between boundary of onion cell and boundary of cheek cells? Yes, this is the onion cell. This is the boundary of onion cell. Let me zoom in and show you. Yes, this is the boundary of onion cell and this is the boundary of cheek cell. What is the difference do you notice between these boundaries? Here the boundary of onion cell is very clearly visible, appears to be thick. Whereas in case of cheek cells, the boundary, you can locate boundary. The boundary is not that much clearly visible like that of the onion cells. So that is one of the difference between the boundaries. Now what about the surface? Okay, so here the boundary is smooth, is it not? And almost the cells, they are all in same shape roughly they are rectangular but when you come to the cheek cells the boundary is not clearly visible that is first thing the second thing is the boundary is not smooth and that is affecting the shape of the cell here almost all the cells are in a particular shape but when you compare the shape of the cheek cells all of them they are not in same shape they are in different shapes so these are the few questions that i wanted to ask you now let us further proceed with the topic the boundary of the cheek cell is the cell membrane this gives a shape to the cell and selectively allows the substances to pass through it in or out of the cell. First of all, let us talk about the boundary of the cheek cells in particular. 
these are the cheek cells the boundary of the cheek cells the limiting layer of the cheek cells is called cell membrane so what is it called look here the boundary of the cheek cell is called cell membrane that is around the cheek cell there is a layer or a membrane like structure present which is called cell membrane okay this gives shape to the cell and selectively allows the substances to pass through it so this gives shape to the cell and the shape of this cell is actually because of the boundary of the cell called cell membrane this is going to give the shape to the cell and one more thing is this boundary of the cell you can see the boundary of the cell is separating the contents of the cell from external environment so it is separating the inner parts of the cell from outside okay and uh, as this is the outermost limiting membrane if something has to enter into cell definitely that substance has to pass through this membrane right if there is a substance here if it wants to enter into the cell then it has to pass through this membrane and then enter into the cell in the same way if any substance from within the cell has to come out then that substance should also pass through this outermost boundary called cell membrane okay but do all the substances enter into the cell and exit out of the cell no that is where the cell membrane is useful because the cell membrane not only gives a shape to the cell but it selectively allows the substances to pass through it in or out of the cell it means look this point selectively allows that means the membrane here the cell membrane here it select only some of the substances and allows them into the cell that's why it is called selectively permeable it is also called selectively permeable membrane because it does not allow all the substances to enter into the cell because if all the substances enter into the cell some of the substances may be harmful to the cell and cause damage to the cell that is why the cell membrane is very careful in allowing the substances to enter or the substances to come out of the cell now the next question is does this boundary also present in the onion cell yes in onion cell also this type of boundary is present but there is some difference we are going to observe that on the other hand the boundary of the onion peel cell is clearer than in cheek cells this is what we have seen in the previous slide okay i told you that the boundary of the onion cell is clearly visible than the cheek cells it is because there is another layer present over the cell membrane known as the cell wall so this you have to understand as the cheek cells have outermost boundary called cell membrane like that onion cells also have outermost boundary called cell membrane but in onion cells or plant cells on this cell membrane there is another layer present there is another tough layer present on the surface that another tough layer is called cell wall the cell wall is thicker than the cell membrane okay the cell wall is absent in cheek cells but cell wall is present only in the onion cells or plant cells so the presence of this additional layer called cell wall makes the boundary of the onion cells clearly visible okay so if you get a question why the boundary of the onion cell is clearly visible then you can write the answer that in onion cells on the cell membrane there is another layer present additional layer present called cell wall that's why the boundary of onion cells is clearly visible okay then what is the use of this cell wall present in the cell in the plant cell let us find out the cell wall it gives shape to the cell when i told you about the shape of the cheek cells i told you that they are not in a particular shape whereas the onion peels they are all in a particular shape then what is going to give shape to these onion cells it is the cell wall the cell wall gives shape to the onion cells not only shape the cell wall also give rigidity to the cell what does it mean by rigidity rigidity means toughness the cell becomes stronger due to the presence of the cell wall then why should the plant cell should have another tough layer on the surface of membrane called cell wall there is a reason for that children you knew that organisms living organisms they are exposed to different types of environments they may be exposed to cold they may be exposed to heat they may be exposed to some mechanical damage right let us first of all talk about animals in case of animals if they are exposed to any environmental threats if they are exposed to high temperature or if they are exposed to some chemicals then they can actually move from place to place they can go to a safer place is it not but the plants cannot move from place to place the plants are stationary they are rooted in the soil 
cannot move from one place to other place so if the plants are exposed to this type of environmental conditions then the cells may get damaged therefore they have developed a cell wall so that they can protect themselves from the harsh weather conditions okay not only that the cell wall also gives the protection to the plant cell against the invasion of several organisms several microorganisms so that's the use of the cell wall in the plant cells okay now let us talk about uh, uh, another part called nucleus okay and uh, do you remember that at the beginning of the session i have asked you a few questions and we have seen a darkly stained structure at the middle of almost every cell in both cells we can find a dense round body this is dense it is round body and what is it called this dense round body that is found in every cell is called nucleus and it is a very important part of the cell and there is a difference in the location of nucleus in cheek cells nucleus is present more or less at the center of the cell okay these are the cheek cells in cheek cells more or less it is present at the center of the cell but in onion cells it is not at the center most of the onion cells they have this darkly stained body at the periphery of the cell or at the towards one side of the cell okay now let us find out what is the inner part of the cell contains within the cell between the outermost boundary and the nucleus the remaining part is filled with a fluid part or a jelly like substance which is called cytoplasm so what is cytoplasm so cytoplasm is a jelly like material that is present between the nucleus and cell membrane and cytoplasm is said to be a heterogeneous material what is the meaning of heterogeneous material it is very important what is the nature of cytoplasm nature of cytoplasm is it is very heterogeneous material then why is it called why the cytoplasm is referred as heterogeneous material it is called heterogeneous material because within the cytoplasm there are so many substances dissolved there will be so many proteins present in the cytoplasm there are so many other parts of the cells present called cell organelles in the cytoplasm there are some macro molecules carbohydrates may be present in the cytoplasm that's why the cytoplasm is not pure it is in fact having different substances in it that's why it is called a heterogeneous material okay so this is the cytoplasm that i am talking about right here is the cytoplasm in onion cells here is the cytoplasm in cheek cells as we have already seen that there is a darkly stained body at the middle of the each cell called nucleus now let us find out about the story of nucleus and about who discovered this nucleus actually the discovery of nucleus it was a significant observation why it was considered as significant observation means nucleus is an important very very important part of the cell because nucleus controls entire cell that's why the discovery of nucleus is a significant discovery and who discovered that it was in the year 1831 there was a scientist by name robert brown you can look here this scientist is robert brown in 1831 he was observing the cells in the orchid leaves do you know about orchids yes these are orchids orchids are a group of flowering plants which produce colorful flowers and he was observing the leaves of orchids he took the leaf of orchid he took a thin peel of the orchid leaf and he kept under microscope and observed when he observed it under microscope he observed a near circular spot that was slightly more opaque than the surrounding areas so this is how cells appeared under microscope and in each cell he observed a near circular spot this is a circular spot here there is another circular spot here there is another circular spot like that in every cell there is a circular spot present so this is what he observed and the circular spot it is opaque than the surrounding areas usually when you observe the cells under microscope they are translucent but he observed that these circular spots they are more opaque that's why they are clearly visible okay and he also observed the same type of structures in other cells also he observed remaining plants he observed animal cells plant cells in almost all cells he observed this near round structure in every cell and that's the reason why as he observed this structure under microscope in every cell he thought that this circular structure was not a separate part it is actually one of the integral part of the cell integral part of the cell means like we have hands legs eyes which are integral parts of the body like that he observed that this circular spot is the integral part of the cell and he named it as 
nucleus okay so that's about the discovery of the nucleus now let us find out about uh, what are the other structures present in the cytoplasm i told you that there is cytoplasm present between the membrane cell membrane and nucleus within the cytoplasm we can find some membrane bound structures called cell organelles as well as more complex chemicals i told you already that the cytoplasm is a heterogeneous material heterogeneous in a sense that it has so many chemicals dissolved in it at the same time the cytoplasm also consists of some special little structures which are called cell organelles like we have organs in our body which which do different works within the cell there are tiny organs present which are called organelles and they perform different functions in the cell and what do we call those tiny parts of the cell those tiny parts of the cells are called cell organelles okay around each cell organelle there will be a thin membrane called plasma membrane present that's about the cell organelles and the cell organelles they help to carry out several functions within the cell you know cell has to perform different functions the cell has to you know perform respiration the cell has to perform transportation the cell has to perform nutrition okay the cell has to burn the food to get energy in case of plant cells the cell has to perform photosynthesis like that the cells they have to perform different works or different functions and in your body also we have different organs to perform different functions like that within the cells there are different organelles to perform different functions so let me tell you some of the cell organelles cell organelles such as chloroplast nucleus endoplasmic reticulum golgi apparatus right these are some of the cell organelles which are very important for the cell to carry out different functions so that the cell can survive understood children that's about the components of cells about the details of each and every cell organelle you will be learning in your ninth class okay that's all for today children thank you for watching i will meet you in my next session